G'day mate and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with me, JD. Um, we're doing a couple of things this episode. First off, you can see we've got just a little bit of food. Um, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to deprioritize all our farms. Um, because they were set fairly high at priority 7. Um, I'm going to leave our mushrooms because our mushrooms are a better quality of food. So I do really want them to keep running. Why the hell are you on a treadmill? There is no reason for you to ever be on that treadmill. The batteries shall always remain very full. Um, anyway, um, at the same time, because we've got plenty of food, I'm thinking about bringing on some more dupes. Um, mainly because we have a lot of sweeping tasks to be done um, along with little construction tasks that are not important therefore I'm not using the debug tool to do them um, we just really need more dupes around the base to just get little things done little not really important things um, so I'm 50-50 on that idea um, what I will do is I will I will tell them to sweep that in case they actually get it swept, at which point then this can become a, bar, a bedroom. At the same time, we're going to choose to print a snazzy suit because that seems like a worthwhile investment. Um, somebody else can get another suit. And for this episode, we're actually going to head our way down the oil production. So oil is um, the fossil book. First off, last episode. Last episode, we really covered how to set up the um, exosuit docks and how to strip mine an area efficiently. Um, at the same time, I also showed how I bring back with me a, or bring forward with me, bring forward with me out into the wilderness, a pipe and a, a bit of wire. So any liquid that we find, we can pump back into the base. Um, at the same time, we set up a, in amongst all this mess, where are we, automation. We set up a little bit of automation um, to make sure that our, our polluted water system didn't back up that basically says whenever this single tile has no water in it will allow water to flow out of um, our our liquid tank um, off from the middle of nowhere wilderness and, and back into the system um, this takes all the onus and, and the pressure off our, our fresh clean water and instead it lets us use dirty water to make our oxygen speaking of oxygen we're oxygenated we have oxygen on our oxygen with some oxygen to spare. Um, in fact, we've got actually got so much, I decided to just pump it out into the wilderness, which is also fully pressurized now. Um, we just have nowhere to get rid of all the oxygen. Um, so yeah, you know, that that's a thing too. Okay, so this episode, we're, we're going to handle oil. Um, so we're going to start researching fossil fuels. We already know here we have a leaky oil fissure. So I want to access that oil. Normally when you dig down to the bottom of the map, because you now have exosuits, I could literally just dig a path wherever I wanted to get to the base of the map. And if we Alt S, go to screenshot view, um, that didn't really help too much. That really didn't help. No, it's just let me scroll forever. Um, the bottom of the map's about here somewhere. Um, actually, oh, just turn on dig mode. There you go. So it is a fair distance to make, um, but with exosuits, it really doesn't take them that long to get there. Um, so yeah, this episode, we're, we're going to handle the oil that we already have because it's going to, it's actually going to present us some problems that we don't really have with the standard oil. So first things first, we're going to do it. We're going to turn on debug mode, um, or sandbox mode, and I'm going to dig all that out. I'm going to use insulated tiles because I wish to keep my farm very much insulated from the rest of this mess. Uh, build that back up. Uh, same time, that tile and that tile both, I want to insulate both of them. 
um, it's it's very very important we insulate our temperature from our leaky oil fissure that will be pumping out oil at 300 odd degrees celsius and keep that insulated from our farm that needs to be between 5 and 35 degrees celsius so we're going to double up the insulated tiles uh, and then we're going to give ourselves access uh, and the way i'm going to do this is we are going to use a manual airlock made out of iron two of them with a mechanized airlock again made out of iron we're going to use the automation method which we've shown before uh, which can just come to here with a clock sensor and i want that door to remain open for most of the day and just once a day close the door to destroy any gases that might remain between these two doors okay the reason we do this is once we close the door and reopen the door we actually create a perfect vacuum inside and temperature cannot move through a vacuum um, at least not an oxygen not glued uh, same time we're going to dig out this area Bit of room to move. Okay, that looks like about the best we're gonna get. Uh, I want to keep this abyssalite here because this is, as far as things go, perfect insulation. Temperature cannot move through abyssalite at all, um, and we're gonna have to use our best to use insulated tiles, which are do have some thermal conductivity but not a lot um same time because we're going to be dealing with hot oil i want to insulate uh from the environment uh and also now that i've, I've a trick to learn okay um we might even have a duplicate come do this so now i've done that I can then come in here and without breaking the seal and releasing this chlorine into this atmosphere, which is basically a vacuum because I've just created it out of nowhere, I can have a duplicate build through the corner here and here. And then when they're done those two tiles, I can then have them build here as well and destroy this tile. And again, we'll, we'll maintain a perfect uh, seal between this environment and this environment. Um, is that right? Do I want extra tile? I don't obviously know. Uh, we are going to dig that out. We're going to say analyze, and hopefully our scientist will come down here and analyze this. Uh, or I'll have debug on, and it'll just happen instantly. My bad. Okay. We want another tile there. We're going to deconstruct that tile. Probably nine. That's probably eight. Okay, so now we have oil. Now, it is coming out at a ridiculously high temperature. But it's instantly absorbing whatever temperature we have in the environment. In our case, um, the temperature in here is actually quite low. So it's equalizing very, very quickly. The catch is... We don't want it to equalize. We don't want it to heat up this area. I'd really like to keep this area cool. Um, so we need a few things. We need a... Uh, we need... First off, we're going to need plumbing. We're going to need a liquid pump down here um, to actually pump out the oil. Uh, let's just turn debug mode back on. I can't keep affording to do everything at priority nine forever uh we're gonna hook up an, a, a a hydro sensor and we're gonna say if it's above 10 kilos of oil um, actually we're gonna deconstruct all that we're gonna add in a second row of insulated tiles and i'll we'll add that back in Yep, I'm doubling up the insulation all the way around. 
Okay. Now we'll add our ladder back in. Um, because duplicates would need to be on a path down here originally to build everything. We want to, and it, it's probably in your best interest to actually build the infrastructure before you un, um, before you expose the actual, um, geyser, geyser. I was going with volcano. This one's not technically a volcano. Okay. So plumbing, we need a liquid pump to plumb the liquid out and I do really really need to make sure because the game's reloaded everything's been reset I need to make sure that is made out of gold for that extra overheat temperature so it's 75 degrees originally because I'm making it out of gold uh, amalgam it adds another 50 degrees to it being 75 total uh, automation put in just a tiny bit of automation wire with a hydro sensor down there we're going to say if it's above 10 kilo and the reason we go with above 10 kilo is in our plumbing our liquid pump our pump moves 10 kilos per second so we want to make sure it has 10 kilos down here to pick up to pump out um, if it's only got five kilos obviously it's still going to run but it's only going to pump a half you know a half a tile's worth rather than a full tile um, same time we need to run power um, I am going to run it through the wall to hopefully insulate the power wire and then hook it up to our pump. Um, obviously, we're going to use insulated pipes. And we're just going to run that through the wall. It is going to be a very hot pipe. Um, and we're going to get to that shortly. And then we need somewhere to put it. Now, I conveniently have this liquid reservoir here which is not doing anything. And we were using polluted oxygen to cool our metal refinery. Um, we still are. But you know what I think would work better? I think if we took oil, crude oil, which can go all the way up to 400 degrees Celsius before it vaporizes, would be a lot better alternative than using polluted water that can only go up to about 120. So we're going to cut off the inflow for our, um, our metal refinery. We're going to swap this to be below 100 degrees. So it's going to kick all the liquid out and it'll run through our lovely automated system. Uh, at the same time, we're going to craft 10 of those to run the machine. And hopefully a duplicate will come over here and run the machine after they actually deliver some iron and it'll clear out the system. In the meantime, back to our plumbing, we want a liquid bridge. I want to bring that up, which will start the actual oil plumbing up. And we're going to run it. Are we going to run it straight in? To think of how I need to cable, how I need to plug this in. Okay, we're just going to leave it there for the moment because I need this system empty. And unfortunately, the polluted water's got nowhere to go. So it is running around, 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 and probably getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Uh, of water, 85 degrees. Yeah. So... I need to go back to our automation. Set... That... To be 200 seconds. Let's not make any more of those. Yeah, it turned to steam in the pipe. <sighs> yeah, our polluted water phase changed inside the pipe. And also damaged that pipe.
And again, whatever pours out of the system is just phase changing in the pipe. Okay. So we're going to go empty storage, which is not what I wanted to do. I actually want to plumb it out. But it is what it is. Uh, we're going to tell them to mop. Mop. Um, and they're going to empty storage and everything's just going to turn to steam. Like I said, the, the, you know, it was a plan. The plan didn't work. All the liquid's coming out everywhere. It's fine. Anything that ended up in here just got pumped into our system. Which is fine, because clean water actually passed straight through it. Uh, mop, probably nine, get rid of that. Get rid of anything there, get rid of anything there. Get rid of anything there, that, that. Make sure this little bit of liquid's not touched, because that's actually important. Okay, mess sorted. Uh, sweep. Sweep up that, sweep up that, sweep up that. Because any bottles only get sorted if they're actually marked to be swept, because this is sweep only. Um, okay, so we've got that mostly fixed. We want to deconstruct a lot of our old plumbing, um, where our old intake and outtake. So we want to get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Uh, we want to go. Our plumbing insulated pipe. So we want our output to go back into the input and then our output from the tank to go into the input again. So we need to stop and think for half a second. Make sure I get all this plumbed correctly. So you go into there, you go into there. Uh, priority is always with the pipe that's in a straight line. So if I do a liquid bridge like that, uh, and we set you to above, well, let's go with um, 300 degrees because we don't want the liquid to phase change because we just found out how much of a problem that caused um, like there's still water all along here because it didn't get mopped up uh, there's still stuff to be swept to be put in here to be fed back into the system yeah but more importantly we now have oil um, we have oil oil is also going through um, our storage tank so any oil that is pumped out of here can be picked up fairly quickly, fairly, fairly efficiently by our pump and pumped up at least into this system where we can use it as a coolant to start with. At the same time, something else we really need to think about is this is hot oil. So we need to cool that oil down or at least maintain a cooler temperature down here. Um, so we're gonna put in a liquid shutoff with a gas thermo sensor right there. Uh, we're then gonna go to radiant pipe, like so. Uh, it will even come back once more um, because we're gonna need another thermo regulator. Uh, we're gonna copy that. We're going to go to automation, automation wire, hook that up, copy your settings over there, deconstruct, buildings, that one, automation, that one, uh, copy that to, can I rotate this? I can. Because we want our output on the left and our input on the right. So I'm going to face that one that way, I'm going to copy that across. Copy that across. I'm going to copy that across. Uh, and then we're going to go ventilation. And we need to get two pipes. So one, this will be the hot gas return. Um, you're in my way. Let's take you in a straight line and we'll just deconstruct that. Uh, 
you're going to bridge across. we go up to there. Okay, so that's one pipe hooked up. Ventilation, insulated pipe again. Bring that straight down, straight across. Because there's abyssalite here, I can't actually build through it. Not without destroying it, replace it with a normal tile, but I can bridge over it. Uh, we need a power hookup. You need power, which means I might as well put a zigzag in there instead and save myself a little bit of materials. Connect that to there. We're going to say if it is above, say, 60 degrees. Um, we don't have to keep this area super cool. We're just going to keep it cooler. Um, and it's already at 38 and climbing. Um, back to power. We don't have too much load on this wire yet, but we can plug that one in. And we do have a certain amount of hydrogen stored, 30 kilos, which in a gas pipes term is only 30 tiles worth. So we actually need to take a lot of gas out of our excess, excess, excess system and run it into one of these two gas pipes. It can be the in and the out, it doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to work our way backward. Uh, we'll just plug that in there, plug that in there. Uh, run a plain gas pipe from there to there, which will empty what little we've got stored into our gas system. Pipe blocked. Did I? I didn't put down these two bridges. That would be why. So that flows up, that flows down. There we go. So we've got hydrogen coming in at 30 odd degrees, going out at 20 odd. Um, more importantly, you can see these gas pipes are cooling down fairly quickly. And when we get down here, the hydrogen's already heated up. It's already, you know, at 20 odd, 30 odd, degrees it is very very slowly heating up in temperature um, whether that's enough to keep this area cool or not I don't know we can always lower this amount now, I've gone with 60 figuring it's a fairly safe number um, maybe we need a lower amount maybe we need a higher amount um, maybe we need more hydrogen in the pipe maybe you don't it's one of those things you can only tell by actually running a system and testing the system that way. Um, but yeah, now we have oil. We also have two hot oil will come out here. We don't have anywhere to put that yet. Um, I think in the next episode, we're actually gonna have to set up the actual refinery stage um, and look at somewhere to put the refinery. At the same time, I think we're gonna take on more dupes because they have swept this area apart from the two seeds that they have literally nowhere to put. Um, so I think we're going to end up bringing in more dupes, not for any particular reason, apart from we have too much food and way, way, way too much oxygen, um, which in our case is actually a really bad thing. If I had some way to dispose of the oxygen, I probably would, but we don't at this stage. So I'm going to leave this episode here. Thank you guys so much. We've got a little bit of an introduction on how to gather oil and more importantly, cool the oil. Um, and with oil, what, one of the things we can do is, as I said, use it for cooling. Um, next episode, we'll look into actually processing the oil into petroleum and, and then what we can do with that oil then. Anyway. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.